Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Parker, and I'm giving you the first lecture of the Usability Principles and Practice series. Today, we're giving you an introduction to usability and accessibility. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be building upon this and going into how you evaluate usability, how you do all the tests, analysis, what's the theory behind creating great usable websites. But today, it's just the foundations. We're going into what is important. So, by end of today, you'll be able to describe why user evaluations are essential for uncovering usability and accessibility issues. But most importantly, what is usability? What is accessibility? And how do you create usable products? So let's get started on the most basic topic. What is usability? So we ask what it is. How is it um, different to functionality? How is usability different to just user experience? And then why are tasks important in directing user experience? So what is usability? Usability is how well users can use the system to achieve their goals. So a usable system contributes to users feeling of the system overall. It's good, we enjoy things that work well. If the system really helps us achieve our goals, then it's great, we love it. But it's not just about that little functional level. It's also about how many restrictions in the way. Do you have to fight with the system to make it work or does it naturally flow? Do you have to fight to find the information or is it easily accessible? And when you're using it, are you enjoying using it? Do you get, come away with a feeling like you lost time, you were completely engrossed in it, it was really good? Or was it a bit of a chore? Now, if you've got something which has a great experience, easy to pull the information out and has lots of good functions that help you achieve your goals, you're going to want to go back to it. You want to talk to other people about it, and it generally is a really good choice. So that really is what usability is. It's not just the simple things. It's not deeper than that. So you could say, well, it's making tasks easier and intuitive. It's minimizing steps, removing the roadblocks, supporting the tasks that users do and how they do them, and giving them great satisfaction. If you get all of that together, then you have a usable website. Just because you put information in a way that you can find it doesn't mean it's good enough. There's lots of things to it. Now, ISO 9241 describes usability as the extent to which a product can be used by specified users to achieve specified chart goals with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction in specified contexts of use. So that's a bit vague. Now we get back to our previous definition about you know, the experience and the, um, you know, the functions, usability, all working together. You get a better picture about what usability is. I mentioned functions not being enough. Uh, functions are great, but you look like a cockpit for a plane. Now, this is a very functional cockpit, loads, lots of things, but where do you start? You know, really, where? Um, unless you've got lots of training, it doesn't make any sense. Most software and websites today, if the user doesn't get it in three seconds, they're not going to get it. So what is functionality? It's the elements that allow users to achieve a task, the fundamentals, so physical buttons. Now, you got to your phone, your iPhone, the home button is going to have multiple um, functions. It doesn't just go um, on and off or to home. It's for Apple Wallet, it's for ID verification, a whole load of things. Um, so it's not necessarily simplicity, it's just the things that you do. And user experience, that magical thing that we were talking about before, the thing that brings it together, is making tasks meaningful and valuable. So a meaningful task is something where it connects with what you love and what you enjoy, the way you want to live your life, the things that you do. It's not just saying it looks nice and has um, has uh, good functions. It's an emotional connection. So users have a feeling of connectedness to what they're doing. Now that sounds a bit nebulous and a bit vague. Um, we could have a whole lecture on what usability, um, so user experience is. But that's the rough way to think about it. It really is that connection of emotion between you and the product. So how is usability functionality different? I've covered this a bit before, but I want to go a bit deeper into it. So functions um, are abilities of product or service to achieve a task. Now we've got um, 
the camera on the right has lots and lots of functions and that's really awesome but actually all you need is a small red button you press and you take a picture or take a video um, just because you have more functions doesn't mean it is better sometimes more functions confuses the person makes it very difficult so you know usability determines how well users can employ the functions of product and achieve the results given it's unlikely that the average consumer will use that really complex camera to achieve all this wonderful um, needs. Just automate everything, take it away, and put the functions into just press a button and go. Now, lots of people think, well, I've got this task, we're going to put this information on here, put that information on there, put this thing there, and it just overwhelms the user, overwhelms the experience. So you've really got to think about what the experience of the user is in the context of use to determine what is appropriate with the functionality if those functions are usable. Um, most websites you get a, a counter or design should be thought of more like a simple camera on the left because we don't know who's coming to the website, it's probably just a average person um, and they're probably not gonna know how to do things. They probably haven't got motivation to learn, haven't got the time to learn, when getting get the job done and out. That's the sort of average assumption. But so how to think about users being different? So, you know, not all users are the same. You know, Steven Spielberg is someone who, you know, you throw an amazing camera at him and he'll really get to grips and produce a masterpiece. The influence at the bottom, not so much. So the camera on the right here, the simple camera, really is designed for the sort also of novice user. Um, I mean, the experts also want efficiency. And just because they can deal with all the functions doesn't mean they want to. You know, how about we just hide everything you, you don't need to make life easy? And you've also got people who've got um, different impairments. So many people have visual impairments, this accessibility area, or memory impairments. Just because your average person on the street might be able to see something or remember something doesn't mean that every one of your users will. Um, if you're making a website for, for example, a blind charity, that's throwing up a whole load of... Um, different challenges you have to work for that you wouldn't ever encounter in your sort of average high street um, website. Having said that, you know, commercial websites should be accessible for all, which we will cover. So the lesson here, always understand your user base. Now, the simpler something is, the better, generally. Um, now, the so the general rule is, if it's making something simpler, it's generally better. But there's a problem with this, that if you always assume that your user is a novice, doesn't really understand things, then you're basically giving people tricycles rather than mountain bikes. Tricycles are great for just getting forward and running with it, but they're not very good for winning the Tour de France. So if you want to do something really impressive like Tour de France um, and win the race, you know, mountain bike, Similar kind of thing. If your user base is highly experienced and they are highly um, technical people with great knowledge bases, then simplicity is not the answer. You need to actually go for a high level of complexity to give them the details they need. You're only going to work out where the boundary is of how simple or how complex by talking to people, by understanding their needs, by running use testing with them, get them into the design room, ask them what they think about the designs, ask what they think about the process, see how well they, they perform. So it's the people that you need to target driving the design rather than assumptions that you have. Understanding the user base is absolutely critical. Also, context of use. Um, you know, if you want to design an app for working in an airport, Know, finding your plane or finding your um, terminal to fly out um, or finding a gate to fly out even, then you can test it in a nice quiet room where you're relaxed, cup of coffee, you've got both hands free. That's wonderful. Pull your phone out and great. But in reality, in your airport, you've probably got a bag on your back. You might have a small kid. You might be carrying um, a suitcase. So you might have one hand free. It's probably a non-dominant hand um, with the phone, so you're not as dexterous. You're thinking about the things, you're stressed, maybe tired, maybe hungry. Now, that cognitive load, those things going on around you, they are influencing how well you can use the app. Now, the psychological principle says 
uh, an average person can remember so it's seven plus or minus two um, items. And that's rubbish because seven plus or minus two probably accounts for average use, but it doesn't account for busy use. So it might be that your home user testing the phone app um, can deal with five items or seven items or nine items at once in their mind, but they probably can't deal with that many when they're busy and stressed and hungry. So you'd want to go down to three items to keep in memory. So the context use, indoors, outdoors, whatever, dictates usability as well. The environment is going to be noisy, be quiet, be stable and safe, maybe you're stressed. So you need to actually do your evaluation with people in the context they will be using it. So don't just say, well, I did my user evaluation, use testing in a wonderful design lab. Like, no, go out there into the public, go to where they're going to and do your testing there. Then your user evaluation is really valid. So here's a question, a little situation. What context of use must an ATM machine work in? Now, um, I was talking to a designer a while ago and said, well, they designed an ATM machine so that you've got a single parent who's been told a hurricane's going to hit the area and they've got to get out now. They've got to go to the ATM machine, get some cash and get on that last bus. Now, what context is that? Imagine the stress. Imagine the fear. Imagine how difficult things are. Maybe they haven't got those money in the bank account. Maybe they um, are wondering about many things like will their kids survive? These are the kinds of things that the cognitive load that the ATM machine must work in. Why? Because if it can meet this extreme example, then it's going to work in every situation. When you're relaxed, made lots of money, nothing's at stake, it's fine, the ATM machine will work, no problem at all. When you're stressed, and you're scared, and it still works, then you've got a great product that's usable. Now, there's other things as well into this, that an ATM machine should be beautiful. Um, research has shown that... Um, People perceive the usability of interfaces to be much higher when they are more beautiful. But we're getting excited from that. Because remember, usability is you know, the functions, the UX, and everything else. So, back onto UX. How is usability and UX, user experience, different? So, usability goals are generally concerned with meeting specific criteria. Remember the ISO definition from earlier. Whereas UX goals are concerned with explicating the nature of the experience. So we say being aesthetically pleasing here, but generally UX is creating this wonderful feeling of, uh, wow, of connecting with people. Whereas usability is more about being very efficient. Now, so these two are very linked. Um, so just now the beautiful looking ATM machine, the beautiful looking interface will be perceived as easier to use, so it goes in there. And similarly, if you've got something which is inefficient, it's annoying to use, you don't easily find the information you want, then it's going to have a bad experience. You can't have a good connection with something you can't use. So they are linked, but there is specific differences. Now, particular um, UX will break things down into desirable and undesirable aspects. Now you can see satisfaction, enjoyment, engaging, etc. are great desirable, annoying and childish is on the undesirable. We can pick things out here, say usability goals are in here as well. So satisfying, pleasuring, um, helpful, they are definitely usability goals. Um, frustrating, annoying, uh, maybe even boring or gimmicky, that might be um, undesirable usability things. So usability is more of a subsect of user experience than being completely different. But you must be very careful not to just say that because you've got usability, the user experience is also there. It really isn't. You have to think about the wider context. Now, usability goals, um, in a greater sense, these are more specific. So efficiency, effectiveness, safety, utility, learnability, and memorability. These are things that if you completely master this, then you've really sorted a great usable experience. Back onto um, uh, UX goals, you see there are differences. Um, you know, for safety, for one, you know, is it, can I put my data on a website and it won't be hacked? That's not 
explicitly in the UX goals, but you could say it is there in the um, satisfying part. It's satisfying to know your data is safe. Now, you got Craigslist as an example of a website which has great usability but terrible experience. So what do I mean by this? I mean, you can find things really easy on Craigslist. It's a simple website. It's very accessible in that the color contrast is very good. It's not gimmicky. Um, you want to find a beauty service, it's quite easy to find. You want to find a gardening thing, it's just really easy to find things. Do you want to use this? No, it's terrible. It's not satisfying, it's not enjoyable, it's not help. Well, you could say it's a bit helpful, but it doesn't give you a great warm feeling, you know, in the same way that maybe eBay might. Um, it generally is a very poor experience to use, but, you know, there we are. So, where does usability come in? Usability must not come before the experience. Create the user experience first. Get that vision. Get that way forward. Really hone what this thing is and then make it usable. So usability is a later item than early. Last part in this. Why are user tasks important? Why should we care about the tasks people care, want to do? Well, I've already talked earlier about how the um, context of use is important and the user is important, but what about tasks? So a task is what someone's trying to achieve when doing... Um, you know, whatever it is, using a website or anything. So you've got to think about, here's an example, um, a ticket machine. You know, we find these things all over the world. Um, you think, oh, what's the functionality, usability, or anything? You know, what are we trying to do? We're try All we're trying to do is a simple task is we want to get um, a ticket for a car. Maybe we want to find out um, what the hourly rate is. Maybe we want to work out how to get changed, but Look at this. It's, a sim it's all, all over the place. Now, when you analyse the machine, it's got, you know, what on earth does it mean? The buttons are unclear. The text is not anything. If the simple aim is get a car ticket and the subtasks are um, work out how much you've got to pay, and maybe the third task could be enter your reg number, that's not a priority on the system. It's... They just threw information at the system and wanted the user to play detective and work out how it fits together. What they need to do is work out what the tasks a user wants to complete and prioritise those tasks in order. Think about the user journey. You're going to approach the machine, work out what you need to do. You're going to um, work out how much it costs, work out if you've got enough money, add the money, add your registration, press the button and go. That's a quite nice sequence. So that's not obvious from the interface. It's not obvious from um, the layout when it should be. Get the tasks, prioritize your usability around the tasks, and then what you're talking about works well. Microwaves, same kind of thing. Microwaves, how the hell does this microwave work? I just want to microwave my pot noodle. I just want to defrost something from the freezer but you give me a whole load of buttons, a whole load of things, I don't know what to do with them, but if you think about the task I want to do and prioritise the usability based around achieving the task that's most important to me, then I can do it. Let's have a look at usability of Apple Watch. Um, and this one isn't so bad that the user tasks are generally very good in that we've got lots of apps and we can just so go, well, I want the music app, I want the clock app, I want the, um, I want the mail app. So I'd go into that, and that's well organised by Apple. But the usability around this task has not really been done that well. So the targets trying to hit are very tiny. You know, why is it that on Apple Watch, all of those um, icons are pretty much the same size in the centre? Why can't we have some which is even bigger? Why can't we control the size of them based on how often we use them? So the most frequent tasks that we um, um, that we do get larger, make it easier. The gestures on there are discoverable, which means that they're not taught to you. You have to find them out. That's not very good. So why can't we have something which teaches you the key tasks first? Um, 
the handoff thing doesn't really work very right. and the content is just a bit I don't know, you need to have your phone with you. So it's not overly um, helping us achieve the task that we have. Um, it's getting better all the time, but not really there. So why does usability matter? Why do we care about this? Users no longer tolerate software that's difficult to use. Um, we abandon software which is unusable. Well, go back to the 1990s, software was pretty bad, um, but options were very limited. So given your Microsoft Office 95, you got the master manual, now you learn how to use it. There was no choice. Now we have choices, we have Google Docs, we have Scrivener, we have lots of other things. If Office is not instantly recognizable, instantly usable, then we abandon it and choose something else. So, you know, it, it's essential. You know, if websites are hard, we'll find another website to go to, especially in fashion retail. If your fashion website isn't good and easy to use, we go to another one. Now, another thing is that we're all reviewing things online. We're, we're putting reviews everywhere. So before we even you bought the software or used the website, we've read about it. And if someone says, oh, it's really unusable, impossible to use, I don't like it, I hate it, I can't get anything done, we won't even investigate. So it's really essential. Also, poor usability, poor software, poor websites cost money through inefficiency. It takes you longer to do, it makes more customer service issues. Um, if we have to go through customer support, it costs money. It makes us have bad experience. And generally, our productivity in use something goes down, the health goes down. It's just terrible overall. So usability is more than a nice thing you put at the end. It's core to the ability of your software, your website, to achieve its tasks. Um, now, Windows, for example, has gone a long way in achieving its goals. So it went from something which is very simple in, in Windows 1 to be 9 to 5, which is very graphical to work around. And arguably, the modern UI of Windows 10 is even better because we've got tiles, which are very good. Um, but overall, Windows has gone through this wonderful iteration of being better and better all the time. There is a video about how to skip that okay. um, for copyright reasons. So what is accessibility? Accessibility is the degree to which products are accessible by as many people as possible. Now it focuses on people with disabilities overall. It's not about just general people, it's about saying particular things. So mental disability, physical disability, any kind of impairment at all. Um, quite often people have more than one disability. So you could say that, uh, like myself, I, I wear glasses, so I've got a visual impairment of some kind. I could be colorblind and you would never know. Maybe I don't even know. I'm also dyslexic, so I have a mental um, uh, disability, although that could be classed mental difference, um, but my ability to think is a different way of thinking than standards. So no, here we are, common disabilities, color blindness, you no, know, one in 10 men, massive amount, 10% of all men are color blind. Dyslexia, a bit smaller, it's about, um, actually a percentage of dyslexia, but the comprehension of concepts is different. Um, so the comprehension of navigation structures is different. Um, so you can't just say that, well, we test their website on these five people who are non-dyslexic, they all find it very easy, therefore, it's easy, well no, because the dyslexic mind works differently. Then you've got physical impairment. So if someone's got Parkinson's, they're shaking, or um, limited control of mouse, hitting that small target button for a click is very difficult. So you, you've really got to think about making it easy for people who aren't finding things easy. Usability and accessibility are particularly profoundly different. So. Accessibility is making sure there are no barriers to anyone using the website, whereas usability targets everyone who uses the websites without considering if you've got disabilities. This is really important to grasp that when you run a usability evaluation, you're not specifically going out about accessibility. You can get over that by including people with various accessibility challenges. You could make sure that you are recruiting um, dyslexic um, people for your test. You can recruit colorblind people for your test, but generally you don't. These are 
tend to be treated as separate items. Luckily, um, accessibility is run. Um, there's the guidelines. Uh, WCAG2 is a great um, framework to follow. When you follow that, you get very accessible stuff. So your challenge is to create a good user experience for all people with disabilities or not. Remember, what we had some form from ISO 9241. Usability is the extent to which a product can be used by a specified user to achieve specified goals with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction in specified context of use. If that specified user is someone with disability, you must recruit from accessible um, or disabled people. Um, if it's not a general population, then you certainly want to, but the context has changed. So you've really got to understand your user base, understand your target in order to determine where this boundary lies. Now, example of a terrible usability website, lingscars.com. This is a live website. It's not from the 1990s. Oh God, I don't know where to start with this. Things are flashing. There's mixed sizes. It's just, oh, terrible. Um, it's difficult to find a way around when you haven't got color blindness. It's difficult to find a way around when you haven't got um, any kind of mental disabilities, such as dyslexia. Um, it's just difficult to find anything. Um, so it's not usable and it's not accessible. It's just terrible. We're going to use this as an example throughout all that series, and you're going to just love this by the end of it. It's wonderful. Um, a different example is couch surfing. Now, it's not the most beautiful website overall. It's not the most um, functional. It's not even the best thing you're ever going to see, but it's very usable, very accessible. Um, it's a website helping you find places to stay whilst you are traveling. So the first thing to do is say, get verified, prove to us that you are you for security. They put it up front and center. Explore place to go. You know, here's a um, place we suggest for you. Add friends. Then you've got group check and events at the top. You can find things easy. It's um, WGAC2 compliant. It's really great. So this is a very usable and accessible website. Is it a great UX website with a great experience? No, it's not, but it's pretty good. So how do we go about creating usable products? Um, the really short version, which we're going to cover more of the lecture series coming up, is double diamond design thinking. So you've really got to discover what the problems are. You've really got to define what you need to do to um, create a great product. You develop lots of ideas to fulfill the brief with you know, iteration and evaluation, constantly going forward and lots of loops. And then finally, you're building, testing, iterating. Usability is in that last section, to, in the deliver section. You are, it, you're the test of the build, test, and iterate. Usability evaluation isn't discovering um, problems. It's not defining ways to do them. It's not even developing concepts. That front end, the first three parts, are UX, user experience areas. But when you get to delivering it, you want to really start to hone in that usability. So what you do... Um, you know, is create something great and then make it usable. So how do we do this? Um, we have uh, design qualities and task performance. So the short answer is when we've built a website, built a prototype, we can inspect it as an expert. Or we can do a user test. So experts use heuristics. Now, Heuristics is a very wide field. Um, generally, it's described to Nielsen, um, which is this uh, picture on the right. So, are you preventing errors? Are you recognizing um, actions rather than recalling from memory? Is the interface flexible, etc.? So, we take these and a few more on top of it, depending on what you're working for, and you say, yep, by what I know, this website is very good or very bad. Let's change it in these ways. Use testing around is different. You are getting a sample of your users in to use your prototype, see how they react. Are they satisfied? 
Do they have high performance? Are their physical bodies reacting in a really positive way, such as uh, pulse racing when you're excited? Um, or is pulse racing in a really bad way? So the pulse is going, they're very nervous um, when trying to do something like checkout, which is not what you want to do. You don't want to stress them out. You want to have them relax. They spend lots of money. So you bring them in, get that, do the evaluation, record what's going on, analyze data, gain insights, say, ah, oh, we did a test. These are the problems we've discovered. And through this, we now know what we need to change in our next iteration. So for designing great usable websites, it's not about the front end. It's about the last part going, right, let's make this perfect now. Now, a thing to think about here is um, why use testing importance um, better than expert evaluation? Well, expert evaluation assumes that your heuristics or measures you're working against are complete and correct. Also, it um, means that you're making massive assumptions about what is good in the website. Now, you might go, well, I think this website prevents errors and it's consistent all across and the system says is very visible and, yep, this is really good. But you're not the user. The designer is never the user, really. Um, so it's only ever best guess, which is very poor. User, user testing gets you the real stuff. Now, you might have things where you're going, why are they doing this? No, nobody ever does this stuff. They're clicking places you'd never click. But they did click, and that's the thing. So it's real life data. So here we are. Um, the theory that drive to use testing really is performance satisfaction, biometrics, heuristics, psychology, and web design principles. And the skill that you really need to have is, you know, evaluating, running like a science experiment, planning um, tests, having an agile design process means that when you discover a problem, you can change it next. Yeah, You're not slavishly dictating, so you're not dictated to by the original design brief, you're designing based on your feedback. Uh, you need to develop portfolios, so thinking about presenting your design story as you go, and then combine data from multiple sources to present a coherent story. So if you like the content today, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, we're going to be going on to a lot more issues very soon on um, running tests, on evaluating things, identifying top tasks, all these things, very fantastic. So like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos just like this.